Hello, Chaplain Kelly here. Today we're going to talk about the four things that a chaplain cannot do, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to talk about why chaplains exist, and namely the four things that a chaplain cannot do for you. But first, let us talk about the basic of why there is a chaplaincy in the United States military, namely, in my case, the United States Army. First of all, we are here to protect the Constitution. The First Amendment of the Constitution reads this, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's also the First Amendment of the Constitution, but also in Title X in the U.S. Code. That's all the laws behind the Constitution that are written for our country. In 1780, the Massachusetts Bill of Rights says this, It is the right as well as the duty of all men in society, publicly and stated seasons, to worship the Supreme Being, the create, great Creator and Preserver of the universe. And no subject shall be hurt, molested, restrained, in his person, liberty, or state for worshiping God in the manner and season most agreeable to the dictates of his own conscience or for his religious profession or sentiments, provided he doth not disturb the public peace or obstruct others in their religious worship. See, foundational of our country is that of religion. It is a part of us. It is a part of the Constitution. It is a part of why our founding fathers and why we exist as a nation to be free to worship in the manner so choosing or free not to worship at all. But there is freedom to worship. It's not freedom from worship. That's not in the Constitution of the United States, but it's freedom to worship. In fact, General George Washington and part of the act of the Congress of the United States, the Continental Congress, the one of the first things they did other than erecting the army is to go against the British, was that to establish a United States Army Chaplain Corps. And that was at the behest of General George Washington. The Honorable Continental Congress, having been pleased to allow a chaplain to each regiment with the pay of $33 per month, the colonels or commanding officers of each regiment are directed to procure chaplains accordingly. The general hopes then trust that every man will endeavor so to live and act as become Christian soldiers, defending the dearest rights and liberties of his country. Now, this act of the Continental Congress was to help establish the United States Army Chaplain Corps back in July 29th, 1775. But when General George Washington had this said this, we have to understand when he talks about becoming Christian soldiers, that's all there was. There wasn't a multitude of faiths. There wasn't Buddhist, there wasn't Muslim, you know, there was only Protestant, Catholic, and some Jews. But that was it. Today, we have a pluralistic military. We have a pluralistic army. And it is the right and duty of a chaplain to help protect that right. What can chaplains do for you today? Well, what chaplains can do is we are here to protect your freedom of religion. That is the right and manner and faith and practice of your faith background or in the manners you're so choosing to you. We are here to protect that right and help in a religious accommodation now, this a rel religious accommodation could be in the form of a yarmulke, a beard, a coffee, whatever it may be, we are here to help in that regard. Now, we can't authorize that. That is something on up the chain of command, but we are here to help and to guide as best we can. Secondly, what we can do is help give spiritual leadership and guidance to the command. We are there as spiritual advisors to the command of all things religion. So if a commander wants to ask me about the AO, area of operation, about a religion that's in that area of operation, then he may come to his chaplain and he may talk to me as his chaplain and, and ask me about that. And I need to be knowledgeable about that area. Also, chaplains are here to give counsel, to be able to be a confidential person for someone to talk to, for that be the soldier or for the family member. And we are here to give 100% confidentiality. Now, what does that mean? That means your stuff stays between me, you, and the fence post, so to speak. Me, you, and God. Your stuff that you tell me is sacred, privileged communication. 
And that being sacred and privileged communication, I'm not going to blab to anybody else. I'm not going to tell the command. I'm not going to tell anybody. Now, someone, a behavior health specialist, a counselor, professional counselor, they have a duty to warn. Now, once it's about harm to body of self or somebody else, then they have a duty to warn others about that. But the chaplain is 100% confidentiality. It stays with us. Also, we're here to help the morale of the soldiers. We're help the morale of the unit. We are here to help pick everybody up. And maybe if we can have the money, we'll take them on retreats and be able to help outings or hikes or spiritual things that we can do, the gatherings that we can do. Or, or one time I was at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and I would take my drill sergeants out hiking out in the Wichita Mountains. Or I would go and take them bowling. I would take them whatever I could do, skating. Whatever fun thing I could do to be able to help them uh, just release and relax and help the morale out just a little bit. But we're not morale officers, but we will help out the morale best we can. Also, we are here to perform the sacred rites, the rituals, the sacraments, the ordinances of our faith tradition. Now, it's not expected. I'm a Protestant. I belong to Christian churches, churches of Christ, denomination, faith background, the restoration movement. But I'm not allowed to and it's not my lane to perform Catholic services. That is for the Catholic priest to do. So I'm there to accommodate, meaning I will go get the Catholic priest if a soldier may want somebody uh, of the Catholic faith and want a priest, but I am not to do that faith practice. I stick in my faith lane, but I'm here to do what my faith background tells me to do. I can do baptisms. Hallelujah, I can. And I can do weddings and I can do all sorts of stuff according to my faith tradition and my faith background. And also, I'm here to pastor congregations. Yes, there are military chapels. And a lot of chapels are pastored by chaplains. And so a lot of times, if it's a lot of chaplains in a chapel on a military post, we'll all take turns. But we are here to support the ministry of the Army Chapel. And also, lastly, I'm here to pray for you. I am here to pray and and to lead you in spiritual counsel and and if the opportunity arises through the scriptures and be able to pray to to our God on your behalf. Now, I promised you, what are the four things that a chaplain cannot do? Number one, a chaplain cannot get you out of the army. Now, we're not here to punch a card and get you out of the army when you see you, you want to get out. That is a command decision. There is a big process that you have to go through to get out of the military if you're not et- your time to get out anyway, like an ETS date. But chaplains are not here to get you out of the army. Now, if you have this, you're struggling and you want to come to us and talk to us about that issue, we're here for you. But there's nothing magical I can do to wave my hand to get you or snap my fingers to get you out of the army. And that leads to another thing. Chaplains cannot get you out of trouble. We can't get you out of trouble. You got yourself in the trouble. You got to get yourself out. That is not my lane. Again, I'm here to bring counsel and hopefully wisdom and hopefully advice to you. Uh, maybe a listening ear for you to, to talk to. But I cannot get you out of trouble. You got yourself into a mess. You got to get yourself out of the mess. As well as chaplains do not have command authority. So I don't have a command authority to sign a paper on a dotted line and get you out or get you out of trouble. I can't do that. Another thing chaplains cannot do is carry weapons. That's forbidden by the Geneva Convention, the Hague Convention. We are bringers of peace. We are bringers of God's presence into the ministry around us, into the community, army community around us. But we cannot carry a weapon. That is for my religious affairs specialist, used to be known as chaplain assistants, what they can do for us. They protect us. But we go into battle and we're unprotected physically, but spiritually, I know that I have God's hand of protection on me. And lastly, the fourth thing chaplains can't do, and it's a big one, I can't get you into heaven. Now, I say this, that chaplains are not magic rabbit's foot. We're not some lucky charm that you carry around with and somehow that's magical to keep you from getting harmed. That's just not the case. Chaplains are not some kind of lucky charm at all. We cannot get you in the heaven that way. I can point you 
in my case as a Christian, to Jesus. I can point you to God. I can point you to the scripture. I can point you to a relationship with our God or your God. I can help you in that regard. But I can't get you into heaven. That's only for the divine to do between you and them, right? Between you and God. That is something for you to experience individually upon your own spirituality. But I cannot get you into heaven by just me being there. Now, in the army chaplaincy, we have a couple of phrases. One is ministry of presence. Well, I will go out in the field with my soldiers. I will go out in the motor pool. I will go out in the ranges. I'll go out in ruck marches. I'll go out wherever they are at and minister to them the best way I can. Not only I'm ministering to the command team, but I'm also ministering to the average Joe Snuffy out there. And I will do that as best I can, best of my ability to help them any way I can. But I cannot get them into heaven again. Now, the last phrase is that of money boots ministry. And that's basically what I just said a moment ago. It is getting there out with the soldiers. It is ministry of presence. So there you have it. The four things that a chaplain cannot do. Chaplains cannot get you out of the army. They can't get you out of trouble. Chaplains cannot carry weapons. And then chaplains cannot get you into heaven. I hope you enjoyed this channel. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And may God's grace be upon you today.